If you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide to teach nature studies as a home educator, then switch off right now. This is not the video for you. However, if you're looking for some common sense principles that will help you adapt to different children, different situations, different seasons, as you explore nature with your kids, then keep watching and hopefully I've got some ideas that can help. Rachel, I'm a home educator to three children and I also work for the Twinkle Home Education team. One of the great things I get to do is to make nature workshops for you to use at home. Now I probably shouldn't admit this but I am not a nature expert. I'm not even a stereotypical outdoorsy person. I live in the middle of the city. The last time I went camping was well over a decade ago and the only time I've climbed a tree is when I got ch chased by a herd of cows and got stuck up there for an hour or two. So definitely not a nature expert. However, I love nature studies with my kids. It's something that I've really learned alongside them that has really enriched our home education journey. It's given us loads of physical activity. It's built our community. It's taught us so much science that the kids have just kind of soaked in and taken on their own. So I'm a big advocate for nature studies. I'm also a big advocate for having a balance to what we're doing, not spending so much time preparing as a parent that we're missing opportunities with our children or not being so guilty that we haven't been consistent in how we're doing something that we takes the joy out of nature studies. So what I hope I can share with you today is some principles and some ways of kind of adding to nature studies when you're able and subtracting from nature studies when you're not able to, when maybe the energy is not there, when maybe the children need a little bit of a different focus. So I'm going to share those with you and a few little tips and tricks along the way as well. And hopefully we can really get stuck into nature studies together. Imagine, if you will, three concentric circles. Actually, you don't have to imagine. I can stick it up right here. So if you have a look there, you'll see three concentric circles. In the middle, I want you to think of that as a focus, the target, the main thing. It's our inspiration. As that extends, this is our like next level. So maybe on a typical week when energy levels are feeling okay, when the weather's great, when we've got time and space to be able to explore nature a little bit more, they're the things that are going to happen in that next circle. And then expand even more those weeks when you've got loads of energy, when it's a topic that really enthralls your children, or if you're the type of person that loves to plan whole unit studies around one topic, then that's when you're gonna be reaching the whole of that circle. So I'm going to talk through those different things, the inspiration, and then let's say the research that you can use in nature studies, and then the expression of those nature studies. We're going to talk through those three layers and how you can build up to create really meaningful nature experiences for your children. zoom right in back to the middle of that circle to the inspiration and that's the nature walk or the nature play it's basically getting outside in nature whether that be one focused walk or whether that be when you're going to the post office and you go a little bit more slowly or out in your garden or if you're not able to access outdoors all the time a nature documentary whatever it is it's interacting with nature and being inspired by it you do not have to have a theme, although that really helps sometimes. You don't have to have all the answers. There are three sentence starters that a lot of nature explorers use as they're outside observing, and I found them really helpful as well. The first thing is to say, I notice. I notice those leaves are turning a different colour. I notice that those insects really like being over near that plant, but not near that plant. I notice. The next thing is, I wonder. So that's when you start to question. You might say, I wonder why they like that plant more. I wonder if it's because that's more colourful. 
I wonder if the leaves are changing on that tree because of the seasons changing, but why not on that one? I wonder why. Then the last thing that you can use as a sentence start is it reminds me of. It reminds me of that time when we went out and we were getting brambles and it was autumn and all the leaves were changing. Oh, it reminds me of that time. Oh, it reminds me of when I leave honey out on the table and the flies come and they seem to really like that sweetness. And then you start to make connections between different things. If you do that, that just that central part of nature studies, that is massive and that is brilliant. And you do not have to have a, um, a very specific plan for that. You don't have to have a day where you're going out on a big hike and traveling far. You can have that mentality as you're walking about and interacting with things all week long. If you do that, that's enough. I know I keep harping on about that, but there are weeks where we can feel guilty as home educators. We can think we haven't done enough. We haven't done this, we haven't done that. I saw someone else's stuff on social media and wow, it looks fantastic and I didn't manage that at all. But if you do this one thing, it is enough and it's wonderful and it's a crux of what nature studies is. So that's the main part of your lesson. Then if you've got the energy, you can build up. You can build up to the next level of that planning of that concentric circle and that will be research. So research is going to look very different for every family, for each kid in the family and their learning styles, for how much energy and time you have that week, for the balance of other subjects that you're looking at. So again, I'm not dictating how you should do it, but here are a few different suggestions. You've done your nature walk or your nature play and the next level you could add in is a book. It could be an e-book because sometimes it might be something that has just come up spontaneously and you can't go to the library. Or you could have a topic that you've then chosen books from the library for. Read a book, it could be fiction or non-fiction, something that links in with that topic and takes that knowledge a little bit further. Another thing that I do when I can't find a book in time or when a topic has come up that I wasn't expecting is I do use some of the resources on Twinkle. So you have the reading comprehensions. I don't use those as a reading comprehension activity. It's just something that we might read together or often they'll have posters and different things that you can look at and read with your children if you are able to get a non-fiction book that works. So we read together and sometimes that's it. We go on our walk, we come back for a snack and we read as we do that and talk about it. A lot of people see nature journaling as a key component of nature studies, but we need to think a bit more creatively about what that could be. Yes, it could be the typical sketchbook, measurements, observing, full of questions. That is amazing. But for our children, that's a learning process and it doesn't suit everybody. So nature journaling is basically ways of recording what you've observed. It could be you record them talking on a video or they do a little video tour around the garden of the snails that they found. It could be them just talking to you and telling you, narrating what they found and discovered, what questions they have, and you writing that down and maybe sticking a photo in. It could be just one sentence and a drawing of what they found. But nature journals are a great way of extending that research, but try not to think of it as a very specific way of recording. Be creative, think about the needs of your child and what might suit them best, and basically just record something on paper that is going to remind you of what you've learned and maybe pose some questions and leave space for answering. Lap books are another great way. Definitely don't want to forget that. People love lap books and they're another great way of doing nature journaling as well. So a lap book is a great idea, scrapbooks, all sorts of things that you can do for nature journaling.
obviously I'm going to mention this next one because I make nature videos on the internet but videos are a great way of doing that research especially if you need to sit back a little bit and let someone else take over then our nature videos do that but it's also there are also so many people on YouTube who are willing to share their expertise to share the animals that they have all sorts of things that they can do to help your children learn more and answer pretty much any question that might have come up on your nature walk so videos are a great way reading nature journals and lastly for this particular circle kids do this anyway is collecting if you collect different things either by photos or videos or as long as you're following the rules and respecting the area that you're exploring collecting artifacts and objects to come back with you that's another great way to research and explore there are lots of different ways that you can do that you can do nature weaving as you go along you can have special um, containers or even just an egg box to collect different things in you might even have a scavenger hunt there are lots of ways of engaging children in that well, ultimately it's just to get them to be able to engage and look and observe that nature at home and maybe turn it to take it apart do different things with it so that they can explore it even more so collecting is a fantastic way of building up that nature plan so you're with me we start with our nature walk and play and then we can choose one or all of those things to build up the next level and then we're going to move on to the final level expressing giving children an opportunity to express what they have explored in nature there are literally hundreds of thousands of ways for children to express their learning and you can probably find hundreds of thousands of those on the Twinkle website but crafts is a great one my children love crafts and if your kids are into that that's a brilliant way Pinterest is a great place to find all those activities another idea is sensory expression so you could have play-doh and they could build models of things or they could imprint you could have a sensory tub filled with things that are linked to what you're discovering in nature lots of different ways structured learning i know some people don't like but if your kid really loves that there are lots of activities that you can get off twinkle we theme them so if you want to learn about moss and lichen you can go to that area on the twinkle website and find it or snails or whatever it might be and you can get things to look at the anatomy of, of nature or you could get things to look at life cycles all sorts of things there are powerpoints to help you so if you want to add in structured learning that's a fantastic thing to do as well now we could go on and on and on with all sorts of different ways of expressing but that's not the point i'm not trying to dictate to you 10 great ways of doing nature studies but to equip you to build up that lesson that session a bit more and some weeks we may might have all the energy in the world and we'll start with our nature walk it'll extend into a whole unit plan we'll have structured learning we'll have play-doh activities we'll have art and music and all sorts of things and other weeks getting out for a nature walk might be a struggle so you pop out into the garden you say i notice that that spider has made a web in that corner but not in that corner over there i wonder why and that's enough and in fact that's brilliant experience and learning and questioning for your children so i hope you've learned a bit from that i hope you've enjoyed it if you have any questions please leave them below and i would love to talk more about this i love talking about how we teach things so if you have any other topics if i don't know the answers i'm sure i'll be able to find someone that does thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in another nature video